Tasmanian tiger, the thylacine, was once top predator in the Australian bush, hunting kangaroos, possums, and it was feared the settlers prized sheep. It didn't take long to push the thylacine into extinction. The European settlers hunted it, put a bounty on its head, and cut down and cleared the forest where it lived. In a little over a hundred years, the thylacine had gone. The last one died in captivity in 1936. But since then, the Tassie tigers inspired all sorts of searches. For the last 70 years, people have looked all over for traces of the thylacine. It was a beachy colour, beachy fawny colour, with very dark stripes. Well, it looked very much like a dog. Ah, 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 ah. About that laugh. Yes. But now, a team led by Professor Marilyn Renfrey from the University of Melbourne has brought a tiny part of the animal back to life. I was in discussion with the curator of mammals at the Museum Victoria, and she said, oh, well, I've got some thylacine pouch young. And I said, wow, fantastic. That's just amazing. I don't suppose I could get a permit to take a few samples. And she said, yes, I think we could organise that. And I said, I'd really like to look at its DNA. This is one of the three thylacine pouch young that uh, oh, right. I dissected, okay. and I can show you where I took the samples from. Marilyn, with Professor Richard Berenger from the University of Texas and Dr Andrew Pask, set out to isolate a gene from the thylacine to see what they could learn both about the gene and the animal by bringing the gene back to life. And And if the technique worked, excitingly, it could be used for other extinct creatures as well. If you could get some really good intact dinosaur DNA, then you could address questions like what their skin colour was, how they developed exactly what their sort of embryology was and all sorts of things about their internal organs, all the things that you can't really see from the fossil record. You could then look at those genetic elements from their genome code and then figure out exactly what they were doing in the developing dinosaur. The team decided to resurrect the thylacine's collagen 2A1 gene. It promotes the growth of collagen, which turns into bone in a developing embryo. We picked it because it was small very highly conserved amongst other mammals, so mouse, man, dog, all have a similar col 2A1 gene. And because it's small, that means it's easier to piece together the jigsaw puzzle. But if you actually really want to try and understand exactly what a gene does in relation to a whole organism, which is what we're really interested in, then you need to put that gene back into a developing embryo so you can see exactly when and where that gene is switched on. And then that gives you a really good understanding of exactly what it is then that that gene could be doing. It's been well over a hundred years since this young thylacine was pickled in alcohol. And over that time, the DNA in its cells has broken down into short, jumbled fragments. It's as if it's been put through a shredder. In fact, three DNA samples that were overlapping had to be used to reconstruct the gene. We've confirmed that that really is a thylacine gene. What we then do is we take that DNA and inject it into a developing mouse embryo, and then we look to see exactly when that DNA is switched on. And in this particular experiment, we wanted to have a marker gene connected to that so that we could tell when the gene was turned on by producing a a blue pigment colour. When they looked at the mouse embryo under the microscope, the extinct gene, which had once been involved in forming the thylacine skeleton, showed up in the developing mouse. It was a world first. We had everybody in the lab come and have a look at the mouse and everybody was really excited. But yeah, it is a really great moment because it was great because you could actually see then the expression of that gene and and you knew that that was the first time that gene had, had worked or functioned since the animal went extinct. What it means now, for biologists at least, is that just because an animal's gone extinct, it doesn't mean that its genome's gone extinct. So, could we soon be seeing thylacines stalking the Tasmanian bush? With this technique, no, unfortunately. So this is looking at one gene at a time and you're you're putting that gene into a different species. So we're really looking at that gene in the mouse and trying to figure out exactly what it was that that gene was doing. Then again, over 70 years after its extinction, who would have thought that a gene from the Tasmanian tiger would live on? Who knows where this technology can take us, but... We're very happy that we've managed to bring a little bit of our wonderful Tassie tiger back to life.